Okay, so let's go to the third method using identity. So let's just have a brief review. So first we have the uh, factoring, factoring method. Then uh, we also have an uh, another set of theorems involving infinity. So aside from factoring, we have the infinities. Then we had the uh, conjugates and uh, for this we have our identities. So when we talk about identities, uh, this means that it's, it involves trigonometric functions and uh, some uh, exponential functions. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the theorems involving trigo function. So we have theorem number one. We have the limit of sine theta over theta as theta approaches zero is equal to one. Okay, so remember if we try to substitute zero to, to our theta, so our variable here is theta. So sine of zero is just zero over zero. However, this theorem states that uh, uh, sine theta over theta is actually one. Okay, so we're going to prove this one later on using table of values then we have uh, theorem number two so if we have sine we have cosine but instead of cosine uh, merely cosine we have one minus cos theta over theta as theta approaches zero so again they are uh, they are approaching zero so one minus cos theta over theta as theta approaches zero is just zero so again we're going to prove this one later on then we have, I'm sorry, uh, we have number three. So this is an exponential function, e to the power of t minus one over t. As t approaches zero, is just one. Okay, so again, sine theta over theta as theta approaches zero equals one. One minus cos theta over theta, zero, and e to the power of t minus one over t is one. So let's try to use table of values to see and prove that these uh, theorem theorems are true. Okay, so let's have our sine x over x as, of course, our c is 0, x is approaching 0. So if it's approaching 0, we're going to use our... Uh, from uh, concepts in one-sided limit so we have the left hand and right hand so approaching zero from the left and approaching zero from the right so these are the values that I have chosen uh, approaching from the left and these are the values that I have chosen approaching from the right okay so again we have sine x so let's type equals sine of our function which is this our variable is that so divided by okay say and let's try to look at the answer so it's 0 0.99 so let's try to drag and observe the behavior of our function so observe that as our function uh, the value of x of our function approaches 0 from the left the value of the function also approaches one from the left from uh, what's this from the right okay so 0 0.99998 then this is 9999993 and this is 9999998983 so gets closer and closer to one uh, and in fact it is actually rounding rounding off to one when we approaches zero closer and closer to zero okay how about at the right hand limit so the same function so let's just copy okay then let's drag okay so observe it's still similar it's approaching one hence we can say that the limit of sine x over x is just power limits just one so we have proven theorem number one using the table of values. Okay, so I will leave theorem number two and theorem number three 
as your assignment. So try to prove this one and evaluate if this is true. If 1 minus cos theta over theta as theta approaches 0 is 0, and e to the power of t minus 1 over t as t approaches 0 is 1. Okay, so let's go to our examples. Example 8. Evaluate the limit of sine of 5x over 5x as x approaches 0. Okay, so in this example, it's very obvious that we're going to use the theorem sine theta over theta as theta approaches 0. So what's the condition? As long as, so again, try to observe this. Limit of sine theta over theta as theta approaches 0. So take note that as long as the angle and the denominator have the same expressions or value, the answer will be 1. Okay, so in this scenario, our given sine 5x, okay, 5x over 5x, our angle 5x is equal to the value of our denominator or the expression of the denominator 5x. So hence, we can simply say that the answer is 1. Example number 9. Evaluate the limit of 2 sine of 5x over x as x approaches 0. Okay, so now the difference here in example number 9 compare, compared to example number 8 is that uh, we don't have the same values for our angle. So again, this is angle, supposedly this is an angle, and the denominator. Okay, so... In this scenario, we are going to use the concept that we have learned a while ago in the conjugates, using conjugates. But however, we're not going to multiply the conjugate uh, uh, and we are actually using the concept, the idea of multiplying a factor. And this factor is equal to 1. So how? So again, our goal is to have the same value for the angle and the denominator. And for us to have the same value for the angle and denominator, we need to multiply a value. Okay? So what's the value? What's the lacking value? Obviously, the lacking value is 5. Okay? So we need 5 here in the denominator. So how are we going to achieve that? We simply multiply our given by 5 in the new, in the numerator and 5 in the denominator okay so again we lacked 5 in the denominator so we multiply 5 in the denominator and of course whatever we multiply at one part in this scenario denominator we're also going to multiply at the numerator okay so simplify so we will have limit of 2 times 5 so these are constant these are constants so 2 times 5 is 10 we have sine of 5x all over. Now we have 5x. As x approaches 0. Okay, so since we have sine of 5x. Okay, so let's try to change color. Sine of 5x over 5x. So this is actually sine theta over theta. We have now the same, ang uh, the value of the angle and the denominator are the same. So this is 1. Okay, so we know that sine theta over theta is just 1. Hence, the answer is 10. Simply have 10. Example number 10. Evaluate the limit of 1 minus cos 3x over x as x approaches 0. So we're going to use the same process, but in this scenario, we're going to use the theorem 1 minus cos theta over theta, so limit is theta approaching 0, and this is, what do we know about this? This is 0, okay? So we're going to use this theorem here. Okay, now, observe that the theorem, for us to work on the theorem, 
the angle, the value of the angle should be equal to the value of the denominator. So observe that at our given, we have 3x here. However, in our denominator, we lack 3. So use the same process. We simply multiply by... Okay, so wait first. Let's try to erase this. Okay, so we simply multiply... Okay, 3 over 3. So why am I multiplying 3? Because the value of the angle has 3x and the lacking value here, the denominator is 3. So I try to multiply 3 in the denominator and of course if I try to multiply below, I will also multiply above. So uh, it's like the uh, principle of balance or equivalence. Okay, so and of course this, this is just 1. So, we will have limit of 3 times 1 minus cos 3x all over 3x. Okay, so take note that I did not multiply or distribute 3. Okay, I did not distribute 3 because uh, supposedly we are going to distribute 3. But uh, the reason behind this that I did not... Uh, distribute 3 is for us to use the theorem because the theorem state it should have 1 minus the cos okay so I need 1 here so 1 minus cos 3x over 3x so now we have uh, this here and again the value of this is the value of this is 0 okay so we will have 3 times 0 which will give us 0 so the answer for this is 0